Someone recently forwarded me an article from The New Yorker about a psychiatrist in Florida who's begun using a new phrase to describe Americans' growing desire to stay home during this pandemic. He calls it cave syndrome. See, research shows that even those who are fully vaccinated have a growing unease and anxiety about venturing out into the world, and that instead they prefer just to stay nice and cozy and secure in their homes. And believe me, there are many days where cave syndrome perfectly captures my state of mind. But I have a career that takes me out into the world. I have children who need to continue to get their education and develop with their social and emotional development, and I do have friendships that I would like to maintain. It's not easy to balance these conflicting values, this safety and security and comfort of cave dwelling with a yearning to go out into the world for enjoyable entertainment and a date night with my wife every once in a while. As we slowly move into the next phase of this pandemic, I keep asking myself, how can I make sure that I hold on to the lessons that I've learned during this pandemic? I fear that we are going to come out of this and be tempted to just block the last year and a half from our minds, that we want to just treat this like a bad nightmare and return to the way things used to be. But the reality is that is not possible. We have an incredible opportunity to hold on to the lessons of this pandemic and use them to improve ourselves and improve the world around us. Our tradition offers us a strategy to come out of this braver, stronger, smarter, and healthier than before. Earlier in this pandemic, I taught an online course, 30 weeks, called Talmud Tales. And every week, we took a story from our ancient rabbis and we connected it to our lives. And there is one story in particular that stands out for this moment unlike any other. It's about a rabbi and his son and their time in a cave. In the first century, soon after the destruction of the Second Temple in Jerusalem, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his son were being hunted by the Roman authorities, and they needed to find a place to hide, and so they found a cave. And it was a perfect place for them to isolate and protect themselves from the outside world. And as they settled in, they spent their days focused only on the things that mattered the most to them. Spiritual development, sharpened intellect, and some good father-son bonding. They came to enjoy this world of isolation because their personal priorities were the only priorities that mattered. It was a reprieve from the chaos of the outside world, and they quickly grew accustomed to their life in the cave. Well, my family and I marked the start of our own cave dwelling by sitting around the dinner table listening to Mayor Garcetti give his Safer at Home order last March. And as we would soon discover, those family meals would become a central part of our cave experience. For the next year and a half, we tried to make the most of it. We spent hours bonding and laughing by making music parody videos of life in quarantine. We got a dog. We took family walks. I had quality time with each of my daughters. I cooked and I barbecued constantly. We celebrated Jewish holidays with friends and family on Zoom who were living all across the country. We read books. I spent time focusing on the things that mattered the most to me. My family, my mental and physical health, my ability to be creative in my career. And I've spoken with many people who have had a similar experience. I feel like we've tended to call these the silver linings of the pandemic the ability to reconnect with people and personal values in ways that we just didn't have the energy or time before all of this began. And many of us know people who have even decided to change careers, to move to new places, to retire early or reconfigure their entire lifestyles. And just like the rabbi and his son, in many ways, our time at home has been a reprieve from a previously 
overscheduled life. And many of us were able to take advantage of this time, but we also knew that our time in the cave wasn't going to last forever. So the rabbi and his son, finally, after 12 years in the cave, were approached by Elijah the prophet, who said to them, it was safe to emerge. And they were unsure of what they would discover. And as they stepped out into the light, they saw a group of people working in the fields, doing normal daily tasks, just living their life in the world. And this infuriated them. What are these people doing, wasting their time with these tasks, they cried out. Why aren't they completely dedicated to the one thing that matters, spiritual enlightenment? And with that, the Talmud imagines that they turned into ancient supervillains. Everywhere they looked, objects burst into flames. They destroyed everything in their path. They had no interest in talking to strangers or listening to ideas that didn't fully align with their own. No, instead, better to destroy everything and replace it with their own agenda. They shot out flames of harsh judgment and anger, and in their minds, they had come out of the cave to a society that was on the verge of collapse, and the only way to reverse that downward trajectory was to just burn it all down. We have witnessed something eerily similar since we've started to come out of our caves. Physical assaults on airplanes at an all-time high. Violence has become standard fare at school board meetings and political rallies. From California to Maine, there are more motorists speeding recklessly and going over 100 miles per hour than ever before. Cancel culture has become a mainstay and the false information disseminated on social media platforms has bolstered mudslinging and aggression. I am appalled by the number of shouting matches that I've seen on our streets over the last couple of months. Rage is in the air. And then there's the judgment. It seems like we are judging each other more harshly and more often. What activities you determine are safe to do during COVID, how and where you wear a mask, your vaccination status, what you post or don't post on social media. These choices lead to assumptions and critiques about political affiliation, an unwillingness to give people the benefit of the doubt, and sometimes lead to friendships just quietly ending. Many believe that they have an individual right, if not a responsibility, to be judge, jury, and executioner. We have come out of our caves with a fiery look in our eyes and a statement that basically says, don't mess with me. But self-righteous indignation was not the way the rabbi and his son were supposed to come out of the cave. Did you come out here to destroy my world, God challenges them? Get back into your cave. And so they were forced back inside. But this time, going back in did something to the rabbi. He was forced to contend with a different side of the cave experience. This time, it felt different. This time, it felt like hell. This part of the story reminds us about the other side of this year and a half in our isolation. The monotony, the anxiety, the fear, the loneliness, the uncertainty. There are those whose isolation has only amplified the pain of being alone during difficult times, and there are others who realize they no longer want to share a bed with the person who's lying next to them. Sales of alcohol and drugs have skyrocketed during this pandemic, as many have looked for ways to dull the overwhelming emotions that just flood us on a regular basis. Many of us have worked harder at our jobs than ever before, feeling a new level of burnout we didn't even think was possible. Others have lost their jobs entirely and are worried about their financial futures. And of course, there are the lives we've lost. The millions around the world who have died from COVID-19 
and the countless others who died during this time for other reasons. My grandfather and my stepmother both died during this pandemic, not from COVID, but because of all the COVID restrictions, my family wasn't able to gather together and mourn properly. In many ways, this pandemic has imprisoned us. It's felt like hell. It's forced us to confront internal demons, to address inconsistencies between the vision we had for our lives and our reality, to dig deep in order to find strength and resilience, to meet challenges we never imagined we would have to face, and to look in the mirror and take a good hard look at ourselves. Back inside the cave for yet another period of time, the rabbi and his son were able to reflect and recalibrate. They were able to sit with both sides of the cave experience, the gift of being able to refocus on the things that truly matter, as well as the pain and anxiety that comes from that isolation. They learned many lessons during their two times in the cave, lessons that challenged them, that inspired them, that frustrated them, that changed them. And the only thing they had to figure out was how they were going to hold on to those lessons when they would finally be able to leave the cave. Because the test that confronts all of us who reemerge from the cave is learning how to integrate both worlds without losing the uniqueness of each. After 12 more months in isolation, a heavenly voice called out and said, go out from your cave. And unlike the first emergence, the rabbi and his son realized this was their opportunity to come out the way God intended. And it was a Friday afternoon when they emerged and people were running around getting ready for Shabbat. And they saw an old man who was carrying two large bunches of fragrant spices. And they curious, curiously asked him, why, why do you need them? And he said, to honor the Sabbath, to make it more meaningful and more beautiful. But wouldn't just one bunch be enough, they asked? No, he replied. It's my job to do this mitzvah, to bring about as much beauty to Shabbat as I possibly can. The old man's answer seemed to provide the last remaining instruction needed for Rabbi Shimon to take the lessons of the cave and carry them into the future. He turned to his son, smiled, and said, See, my son, how dear and special a mitzvah is to the Jewish people. And with that, their minds were set at ease, and they were able to live peacefully in the outside world. But what was it about that old man carrying those spices that solidified everything for the rabbi and his son? What is this story from the Talmud teaching us about the nature of a Jewish spiritual life after destruction and chaos and trauma? The Jewish response to trauma and pain, the antidote to all the suffering and the anger and the anxiety is to bring more beauty into the world. And the Jewish way to do that is through mitzvot. Actions that counteract the negative forces that surround us. Actions that focus us on things greater than ourselves. The story reminds us that the way to come out of this pandemic stronger and braver and healthier is to hold on to the lessons that we've learned during this pandemic and to use those teachings to turn our attention to improving the world around us. When most people study this story, they stop right after the rabbi and his son meet the old man. But there is one more piece of the story that is essential to understanding its message. Rabbi Shimon's son-in-law hears the news about their emergence, and he runs to greet them, and he starts tending to the cuts and sores that developed on the rabbi's body, because after all, there's no way to come out of a cave without injuries. We are all going to emerge from this with pain and wounds that will fester if we don't care for them. Embarrassed to see someone he loves in such physical and emotional pain, the rabbi's son-in-law starts crying and says, I'm so sorry I have to see you like this. But the rabbi stops him and replies, You should be happy you are getting to see me like this. If you hadn't, 
You wouldn't have been exposed to all the knowledge and lessons that I've learned during my time in the cave. Since a miracle transpired for me and I survived this, I will go out and repair something for someone else. So please, direct me to that which needs to be fixed. And with that, the story ends. We have learned a lot about ourselves and our society during this pandemic. There were parts of our lives before COVID that had been broken and needed repair. There were cultural and political challenges that needed addressing. Our time in the cave revealed that much has been hidden, and as a result, we have gained personal and collective wisdom that can guide us into a bright future. We must not emerge with a desire to burn it all down but rather a willingness to heal and to find the beauty. Our tradition believes that the way to do that is by directing our energies outward. It is through meets vote, actions that focus us on things greater than ourselves, whether it be tzedakah, pursuing justice, caring for the stranger, healing the sick, providing for the poor, working for peace, through these things, we not only heal the world, but what we do is we heal ourselves. With the lessons from the cave fresh in our minds, let us emerge anew into a year full of hope and healing and possibility. Shana Tovah.